I don't think I have to tell you what a neuron is. We all know they are what constitutes the brain and the nervous system. They are to neuroscience what the atom is to physics, since both can be considered the fundamental building block of the system the researchers in the area are investigating. Due to this similarity, maybe you've thought about the possibility that, just like the philosophers in classical Greece identified that all matter can be divided into atoms, the concept of a neuron would have been thought of way before their existence was proven. Or at least I definitely thought of that possibility many times. It just makes sense, doesn't it? And if anyone imagined their existence before proving it, exactly when was it proven? And who did it? In this video, we are going to explore the development of what we call the neuron theory. How it came about, what it is, and its influence in neuroscience today. I'll also mention that you'll enjoy this video the best if you watch my videos on the history of neuroscience and neuroscience essentials beforehand. So if you haven't, go give those a watch after this video. And while you're at it, leave a like on this one and subscribe to the channel. And now that you have, let's get into it. Around the 4th century before current era, when Alcmaion of Cretan identified the brain to have a central function in human life, another Greek thinker by the name of Praxagoras seems to have been the first person to develop the idea of what a neuron might be, as well as the fundamental role it plays in our thought creation process. In one of his lectures, he presented the theory that there were minuscule veins in the body responsible for transmitting signals. In doing so, he also used the Greek word for neuron to refer to these veins. This was, of course, quite remarkable. However, due to the lack of technology of the time, neither Praxagoras nor the thinkers that succeeded him successfully pursued this idea, instead focusing on observing and studying nerves. This prevalence of nerve studying continued through the medieval ages and even when thinkers attempted at formulating a theory of brain functioning, it seems they typically made no attempt at describing a neuron. Although Praxagoras seems to have been the first person to come up with the idea of the neuron, none of his works survived the centuries since. Due to this, it was only in the 18th century that the neuron would once again be relevant. Emanuel Swedenborg, was a Swedish scientist who first came up with the theory that neurons were the fundamental building blocks of the brain, in what can be considered the modern era. Unfortunately, however, his work was not published until the late 1800s, meaning he did not receive the proper acclaim and his discoveries didn't have the impact such a monumental discovery deserved. Instead, in order for us to find the moment where scientific circles became aware, at once, of the existence of the neuron, we need to jump forward another century. The discovery of the neuron came as a direct result of the development of cell theory. And, just like it, the neuron theory was only developed thanks to the advancement of microscopes. The first person we are aware of having observed a neuron under a microscope was the Czech anatomist Jan Purkinje in 1838. When observing a layer of cells from the cerebellum, Purkinje and his student Gabriel Valentin observed a layer of globules, which sat on top of another layer of long fibers. The globules were neurons, and the fibers were their axons. The two scientists had become the first people ever to observe a neuron. However, although many other observations were made during the mid-19th century, technological difficulties did not allow for better investigations, and researchers were locked at a standstill between those who argued that each nerve cell was independent of the others, known as the neuron theory, and the ones who thought all nerve cells were interconnected in a web, the reticular doctrine. And this discussion would last for decades, until around 1873, when Camilo Golgi, a strong supporter of the reticular doctrine, 
developed a staining technique that allowed for individual observation of the neurons by staining the observed tissue and contrasting it against a bright background. Once this technique was fully developed by Santiago Ramon y Carral, scientists were able to produce full illustrations of what neurons and their axons and dendrites look like. These observations demonstrated for the first time that these cells were independent of each other, communicating through a junction, later called the synapse. These observations meant that the neuron doctrine was now the prevalent thinking in neuroscience, as it remains today, when it is accepted by virtually all neuroscientists. Both Golgi and Carral won the Nobel Prize in 1906 for these discoveries, and many considered this discovery to have been one of the foundations of modern neuroscience, along with the discovery of neurotransmitters and the action potential. But what exactly is the neuron theory? At its most fundamental level, this theory states that each neuron is its own individual cell, and that these cells contact each other at specialized junctions, called synapses. Furthermore, these cells form the developmental, structural, functional, and trophic units of the nervous system. Okay, I know that might have sounded like a lot of information thrown at you very quickly, so let's unpack it. Firstly, neurons are individual cells that communicate with each other through the axon and the dendrites. The axon functions primarily as the output signal branch of the neuron, communicating with other nerve cells while the dendrites exist mainly to extend the body of the cell to make it easier for other neurons to communicate with it. Whenever two neurons communicate, they never touch. Instead, they do it through the synapse. This is what the first part of that convoluted sentence essentially meant. They never touch, and communication happens entirely through synapses. This is the bigger difference between the neuron theory and the reticular doctrine. Now, the last part of that sentence, neurons are the developmental, structural, functional, and trophic units of the nervous system, all this says is that neurons are the reason their nervous system can develop itself, giving it structure and allowing the whole system to function. From my point of view, the trickiest part to understand in this sentence is the trophic units bit. I mean, what does trophic even mean? Well. It turns out that trophic units is the term to denominate the smallest subset of cells in the central nervous system, which act to support other cells' metabolism. As such, this simply means that neurons are the nervous system through and through, and that's pretty much all there is to it. The neuron doctrine simply states that the nervous system is made of individual cells which communicate with each other at the synapse, and that these cells make up the nervous system at all levels, from its development to its structure and function, down to even its own metabolism. Pretty simple, right? Well, this simplicity is what has allowed the doctrine to stay strong for so many decades, and to have defined neuroscience to the degree that it has. That's the neuron theory. My hope with this video was that the next time you think about the brain, you will have a more profound and clearer understanding of what it's composed of and how it functions, even if only a very basic one. This video marks the end of phase one of this channel, in which my goal was to make videos on the absolute fundamentals of neuroscience as well as a summary of its history. You can expect videos on more recent developments in the neuroscience world, as well as some related to psychology, since the name neuroscience was created precisely to indicate that this channel is about neuroscience and psychology, hence why the PSY in the middle instead of SCI. So from now on, I'll attempt to strike a balance between still explaining some of the more fundamental aspects of brain science, while also giving you content on more recent developments in the field. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, as it would massively help the channel. As always, references are in the description. Take care, and I'll see you next time.